Hello and thanks for joining me. I want to talk about online class management. Managing your online class. Traditionally, classroom management was affixed to the physical space, meaning your physical classroom setting. And when COVID arrived, many teachers thought they could move over the strategies into the online course or their platform. But this was far from reality. The reality is that Online course management requires a different perspective and will require different strategies to be employed. In the physical setting, if a teacher realized there was going to be some problem or a situation was happening, the teacher would physically move to that location. And of course, if students are doing something wrong, they would desist from doing that. Now, within the online space, it is not like that. You cannot just move around in that space because it's not possible. You know, you're not in the virtual world yet. So bearing this in mind, let us explore some strategies for managing the online learning space. In order to manage this online learning space, you will need to be orientated to the learning space. It is important that you get this orientation to ensure that you know where the tools are and how to use the learning space or manage that learning space effectively. Just imagine your online learning space as a car. You're going to tell your passengers to come in, have their seat belts on before you drive off. Therefore, you must set expectations and protocols as you navigate the learning journey. The protocols and expectations of your online learning space should say how you're going to communicate with students as well as their parents if that's applicable. As you're doing your protocols and expectations, it's important that you establish a rapport with your students to ensure that they understand what you're all about. And I think that social connection is important in managing the online learning space. As you know that it's important to have your resources, I've always known over the past years or so that not having the resources can create problems in the online class. Therefore, it's important to ensure that participants in your class are aware of what are the resources that are going to be used online and to ensure that they have access. It's very frustrating when individuals come into a class and it requires a textbook and they do not have that online version or access to the physical copy. While in the physical space, we always had the documentation regarding individuals right in our hand or right in a desk drawer or something. In the online version, it's not like that. You have to, however, have access to the student's profile. Students' profile give valuable information regarding the student's learning style, abilities, and what areas you need to concentrate on, as well as social, cultural, and religious factors that might factor in to your lesson. You don't want to eliminate or forget any of the elements necessary because if you do so, it can lead to exclusion, which will have an impact on how you manage your class because I think effective management shows and demonstrates the inclusion of all students online. In the face-to-face class, if the teacher had good structure and the lesson was on track and paced well, it would be considered an example of good practice. Structure is very important for the online class, just as it was for the physical setting. In an online class, you should have structure and your structure should be consistent from week to week. What you have in the learning management system for one week should be consistent as it relates to layout for the next week and so on. You must have consistent routine so students can follow. Remember, many students have special needs or accommodations and if you do not maintain that structure, you will lose a lot of them as they go through the activities. As you go through your lesson and you structure your lesson well, Don't forget to add a little humor. Students must see you as a social being. In the physical setting, you could walk around and see what's happening and understand that Johnny or Mary or Sue 
or Jonathan is just not getting the concept. In the online space, it is not like that. Therefore, if you want to manage that online space to ensure that students reach their maximum potential, it is important that you ensure that students are following the lesson as you go through. There are many strategies that you can employ to ensure that students are following your lesson. For example, you could ask questions. And of course, you could ask various questions to ensure that you're differentiating your questions to accommodate the students in your class. Another thing you might want to consider is using poll questions to grab information from students to evaluate where they are as it relates to your content. Don't forget to invite those students to ask you questions after the lesson if needed, because what you realize that the online space creates a barrier sometimes to the necessary connections needed and students will be somewhat apprehensive to ask. So always leave a room that they can come and ask questions after the lesson is finished. The management of an online lesson or course, whatever format you're using, requires sustained attention by students who are participating. And there are so many strategies that you can employ. For example, I've seen where you have online group debates, you have dramatization of concepts, you have modeling of work by teacher, and also you can have group activities, because I think that is a nice way of getting students to work together, as well as building a learning community. As I mentioned before, the need to understand and know your student's profile, that's important, because if you are to manage properly or for the good practice, you'll have this information regarding student's profile in the back of your mind at all times. And this will help you to differentiate work, to set up group activities, as well as to support the individual learners who will require special accommodation or who will need just a one-to-one -one session with you to guide them on their way to academic prominence. Don't forget the importance of breakout rooms. We have so many platforms that use breakout rooms today because these breakout rooms can be used to differentiate activities, to have learning centers within these learning spaces and so forth. So I think there are so many things that can be done when you have the ability to divide students in groups online. Never forget the power of group activities in managing your online class. As you develop the working space within your online class, you must understand the need to build that online space to respond to the diversity within your classroom setting. You must be responsive to avoid conflict and you should give students buy-in. Allow students to say to you what they like within that learning space and what additional resources they'll need. This will enhance the learning community as well as help manage the learning process. One of the biggest barriers that I see as it relates to online learning is the distance between the learner and the teacher. And of course, their fellow students for students to student interaction. And I think we have to teach students how to use their webcam. For example, if a student is talking, they should be looking at the webcam directly and talking into the webcam. If the teacher is communicating, the teacher should be looking into the camera and talking directly into the camera so it makes that connection seem seamless. Somewhat, that is. The final strategy I want to recommend is just dressing appropriately. You know, if you come to work, you dress accordingly. If you're in physical space, you dress accordingly. If students are attending an online class, they should be dressed appropriately. Now, this is especially required for K-12. I consider this personally a good way of setting the tone for learning. I have seen in Jamaica and other places where students who are going to be taught online are dressed in their school uniform and are sitting in front of their computers. Notwithstanding, I've heard about cases in United States where teachers have called individuals up and it's 12 o'clock in the day and the student is saying, Miss, you woke me up. 
you have to gear these students in getting ready and prepared for work. The work to do in the day, of course, and the work for future. Let me say thanks for joining me and I hope you have gained something from this. As I stated before, my main aim for this channel is to just release information that I've gained over the years, close to 30 years or more of teaching online face-to-face -face and in a blended mode and I continue to teach online. Just a few tips that I hope will go further down the road of helping someone to develop some good practice as it relates to online teaching. Thanks again and please remember to subscribe.